Well, the idea of the press calling out Karim Jean-Pierre and the Biden administration really comes to a point here because Biden had been espousing this idea of bigger corporations. He doesn't want bigger corporations. But then when you have a bank like First Republic Bank failing and you have J.P. Morgan Chase, really the only bank to offer buying everything out, the White House is all for it, which just makes them an even bigger bank than what they were previously. I mean, this is one of the biggest banks in the world. And Joe Biden just turning a blind eye to it. So this gets raised to a point here uh, by a reporter. Well, uh, this, this administration, we sat here where you talked about corporate consolidation um, as something that you want to push against. Our reporting is that J.P. Morgan was the only bidder that offered to take the entire bank over. The administration, I just want to be clear, you support that because it was the only option or you support that because it was the I best mean, look, option? No, I totally understand the question. This is an FDIC process oh. uh, and, made, and, and these decisions are made by the FDIC about the bids and all. Passing the buck on to somebody else, folks. We just got done saying this is what they do. You name the you name the problem that Joe Biden caused. They're going to blame somebody else. Immigration somehow that's Donald Trump's fault. Inflation somehow that's Donald Trump's fault on top of Putin and G somehow. I don't know how that one got mixed in there, but it did. When you have increased gas prices, that was called the Putin's price hike. That was his fault. You have a foreign policy issue. Well, it's it's a mixture of Taiwan mixed with uh, the supply chain that's happening because of China. But we can't say China released the Wuhan virus, even though they did out of a Wuhan lab leak. Who knows if now we're going to get removed off YouTube. So head over to Rumble, folks, if you haven't already, because God only knows when this thing's going to get shut down here. But it's just amazing how they're going to sit there and pass the buck on to somebody else. So now it's just an FDIC issue, folks. It's an FDIC issue. Everything they said about corporate consolidation. Now, no, forget about that. For, that was just that was just a mishap. Forget about that. We're supposed to be gaslit now and pretend like that was never said. And now pass the buck on to somebody else. Ultimate sale in this particular instance with First Republic. So this is something that they they run. The directive from this uh, from the, pros the president is very clear. When he talks to his economic team, the direction he gave them is to prioritize protecting depositors, uh, workers, and small businesses, while also ensuring that taxpayers are not on the hook uh, and and shareholders lose their investment. That's the directive that he's given to his economic team. But as far as the process, the bids, and the sales, that is something that the FDIC moves forward. It didn't push against this deal that makes the biggest American bank bigger. It, it is an FDI process, as I just mentioned. This is something that they are they are in, in charge of, and they are the ones who decide on the bids and the sales. What the president has done is given his uh, his uh, economic team a directive on how to protect taxpayers and also depositors. And so that is what I can share with you. FDIC runs this process. It's amazing. It's amazing. Just blame somebody else. Put it on them, even though you sat there. For a long while, by the way, which is why they're calling it out. You sat there for a long while saying, well, we're not really into the corporate consolidation. We don't want big corporations. And now when this is happening, they're just, oh, well, it's somebody else's issue. So <laughs> it's astonishing. We got a little bit of a bonus clip here for you folks before we move on to our next segment of the day. Um, we got the man, the myth, the legend, the other gladiator, Philip Wegman of Real Clear Politics. Maybe, honestly, out of this entire White House press briefing, probably has the most important question and finally calling out another elephant in the room of somehow these politicians have information beforehand of an event happening like First Republic Bank going down and selling certain shares and then investing in J.P. Morgan Chase later on. He brings it up here and watch how she scurries out, folks, real quick. Thank you. Uh, another one on the banking issue. I'm wondering what the president's message is to members of Congress who might see the current banking shakeup or future banking troubles as an opportunity to make a buck. Because, for instance, we've already seen some members of Congress who have had what seems like particularly good luck um, offloading shares of First Republic Bank and turning around and buying shares of J.P. Morgan. Look, uh I'm not going to speak directly to that. I have not seen those reports. I get what you're saying. What we will continue to say is that uh, the president is going to make sure that uh, it's not the taxpayers uh, that have to pay for this uh, or lose uh, for uh, on this. Uh, we want to make sure that they're protected. Uh, depositors, families, small Read businesses, out of that binder, very green. clear, and it does not protect investors. 
uh, First Republic shareholders and bondholders will lose yeah. their entire investments. That's what the president is, that has directed point, his economic team to do. FDIC runs this process, and I'm just going to leave it there. But the president has been really, really clear. No taxpayer money is being used to cover costs uh, for this resolution, and he wants to make sure that they are protected and that uh, the mismanagement of these banks, like, for ex example, First, Pro First Republic, is being held accountable. And so that's our focus right now. I'm just not going to speak to any any kind of hypotheticals that you're laying out for me. It has been very clear when it comes to the wealthy that they should pay their fair share, that they should not skirt, um, you know, tax law. Is there a need for the president to go to wealthy lawmakers and say, if you have access to new information that maybe the public doesn't, perhaps you should take a step back? Look, what I've been very clear about is what the president wants to make sure, that we protect taxpayers and that uh, investors have to uh, make sure that, you know, that they are held accountable. And that's what the president is going to continue to say. Uh, of course, of course, the president has always said, even with his environment in, in economic policy, that we need to make sure that we look out for the little guy. This is why we don't believe in trickle-down economy. This is why we believe in building an economy from the bottom up, middle out. That is what you see in every economic policy that the president has put forth, legislation that he's put forth that has been historic and has led to uh, that type of uh, economy where we do not leave anyone behind. And that is our focus. Thank you. There she goes, just running off the stage. By the way, Peter Ducey didn't get a question in. And it's amazing. It's all about the little guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do everything you can to stop bad behavior from happening by incentivizing bad behavior. And then when somebody mentions about bad behavior, which, again, I think is the, the elephant in the room here of how these politicians in Congress are somehow making and getting lucky, as you heard from Philip Wegman. Just the luck is amazing by, like, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and others. It's just amazing how somehow they make these sell-offs or these bids at certain moments in time when nobody else knew any information about it, but she doesn't want to comment on it because, heck, Joe Biden was probably, allegedly, maybe one of those same people, and who knows who else is behind the Iron Curtain there in this freaking government of ours with these slimy politicians that need to have the swamp drained real quick. Somehow these people keep getting voted in, folks, and it ain't me. <laughs> me voting for any of these people. Uh, I don't vote for Nancy Pelosi. God, she's terrible. I don't, I don't, it's not me, okay? Okay, we got to be blaming somebody else here. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.